related to that, uh, a few people were asking. I travel daily two hours on a bus all the time. What what can I do? Zikr, watch Zohbat, listen to old zikrs. Yeah. What else can they do? They can edit. Astaghfirullah wa tubu ilayk. They can make istighfar because that istighfar will clean them, clean their loved ones and at least clean the energy that's trying to attach itself to the person. So if you're going to make a zikr and the, the journey is long then istighfar. Astaghfirullah al-Azeem wa tubu ilayk. The Azeem because you're asking from forgiveness by asking Allah Sifat al-Azeem that your might and your majesty that can, nobody can comprehend <coughs> And my sins are small and in comparison to your greatness Ya Rabbi, wipe it away. And it's not something difficult for Allah Another question, how can we remove a bad character that we identified in ourselves during muhasaba? The removal of the character is the working on the opposite of that character. Means that once you identify you can email and, and ask a specific question, the shaykh I have a lot of anger and I identified my anger, then they teach you how to make the zikr, the salawats on Prophet the istighfar, how to make zikr ya haleem to calm yourself and most important is to put an outside reminder for inner sickness. So means wrap something around your arm and say, Ya Rabbi I'm going to work on this character of qadab and anger for 40 days at least and every time I'm about to get angry I'll see this red or this yellow or this sign of something that reminds me I'm working on my anger. As soon as I'm about to open my mouth and give a reply or get angry then they teach you, go wash. So there's a whole remedy for the characteristic the majority of which 99% people are now suffering from anger. As soon as the testing comes they hit with a test from Allah most people are so toxic like petroleum, their, their blood is like gasoline. It doesn't take much to spark them, their entire complexion changes and they're lit up, they're, they're on fire and you can't even calm them down they're so hot and heated. So that as soon as you get angry there has to be a training, I'm gonna go wash. It's not the time to talk, it's not the time to argue. You entered into a state where shaitan has ignited you, you are now in isolation. There's no need to talk to anyone in your satanic state. And most people say, no, no I have to resolve it right now. No, because in your satanic state the shaykh has no permission, the person has no permission to be around somebody in a satanic state. That's why Prophet walked away, he says, because now shaitan will be present. Because of your arguing shaitan will come and me and shaitan we don't occupy the same space. So it means that's not a time to have an, a discussion when you're angry and on fire, it's a time for you to go wash, to calm yourself. First battle your shaitan before you try to resolve outside issues with people, places and things, inshaAllah. Okay, this question. <clears throat> During meditation when we claim to be nothing and an oppressor to myself, here does self mean ego or soul? How better can we understand the Qur'anic ayah, La ilaha illa anta subhani inni kuntum mina zalimeen? Zalim, yeah, this, your, your soul is never zalim, your ruh is never zalim. So let's just keep it in English before you try to understand Arabic and there's a secret behind the Arabic. The very English is very easy. Is your nafs, your ego. The ego has to be brought down and can never be killed. The nafs cannot be killed. The nafs will be something that rides you or becomes your buraq in which you're riding your nafs and will shoot you into the heavens because the nafs is under your control and you have flipped the situation. But and the nafs if you don't control it will be partner with shaitan. And there's the shariq, the shaitan never partners with the soul, the soul has nothing to do. The soul is haqq and shaitan is false and the truth never come together. So the only shariq that somebody can make is through their nafs 
The nafs becomes a partner with shaitan against Allah but the soul is always pure, it's a pure light from Allah's Divinely Presence. The nafs will partner to destroy the soul. So then you have to bring the nafs down. So that every time and all year round the nafs is riding you. Ramadan is the only time that you can see how you ride the nafs. Because you tell your nafs, look no matter what you say, I'm a Muslim, I'm going to do my fasting or we're going to die. If the nafs believes that, yes, you're going to do Ramadan, he wakes you up at 3.30 because <laughs> he's like, ah, we're not doing the hunger, I'm not going to starve, get up, eat, now big buffet. Now you're riding the nafs because it's helping you to do your worshipness. So that's the sign that Allah wants to show you, no, this can be done. If you push and you push and you push enough in your life, your zikrs, your, your love, your muhabbat, the nazar of Prophet it will push it so far down that nafs will begin to be ridden and realize that you seem to be the boss, now let me help you. I will give you, instead of fighting, I will give you a himmah, I'll give you a push and a zeal to do your worshipness, to do what you have to do to make Allah to be pleased. But not for a blink of an eye Prophet described to leave yourself to the badness. Always know that it's there and you're continuously doing all your practices to bring that beast down, inshaAllah. Sayyidi, how do we bring out tears when we engage in meditation if we are not very emotional people to begin with? Get an onion, <laughs> fake it until you make it, just sit there and say, yeah, but I don't know why I can't cry and I don't want you to, to beat me and put me through difficulty, let me get an onion here, zh, 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 grind it and just put it through you and then say, yeah, Rabbi, please accept my tears. <laughs> that's, that's it. Sayyidi, can other people's energy reach us through their eyes when we make eye contact with them? How can we protect ourselves? No, definitely we're energy beings. That's why Nazar bi Qadam is one of the principles of Naqshbandiya is that in our lives train ourselves to keep our eyes upon our Qadam, our feet. One, the reality is that my eyes carry my desire. So out of the four enemies of the self, the nafs, the hawa, the desire, the dunya, all of these are in the eyes, the, the, the dunya desire is coming through the eyes. What the eyes see, the eye wants, so that's why they call eye candy because shaitan knows the game too. If I put it where my eyes are and you know where your eyes see the most in the market is the most expensive part of the market because you're at eye level, so it means that whatever your eyes are seeing it's wanting. So Mawlana Shah Naqshaban was teaching, keep this desire on your qadam, on your feet. Walk in life looking at your feet, then you won't be surprised where you ended up in life. If your whole life was that I walked and I looked at my feet and I always prayed, Ya Rabbi take me to good places that you're happy, that this qadam to match the qadam of Prophet Sahabi, that my shaykh and I become a muqaddam and I become a person of the footsteps, inshaAllah. Sayyidi, is there any specific advice for women in tariqah related to meditation or energy? Particular advice that women have the ability to have very powerful and strong meditations because they have two spiritual points. They have not only the heart but they have the, the holy womb which Allah brought the secret of creation within their womb. They have a, a softer outside and a harder inside. So it means their, their subtlety and softness will allow them to pick up energies much faster, much more powerful, they're more sensitive to energies therefore they have to be very careful of satanic attacks. And that's why 99% of Jahannam is filled with women of, of holy hadith of Prophet Not against, I have, we have nothing saying bad about women but you can imagine in the last days when the energy is horrific and the energies are flowing, they're describing now the most susceptible to energy is going to be a woman. 
she's picking up the energy from all directions. If that energy is coming negative and she makes choices by emotion then imagine the amount of difficulty, amount of, of uh, horrific uh, energies that can quickly dress the woman. So she's in a danger and that's why we said today like no other time in our history women are all now tattooed. Everywhere you go they're all fully… where it used to be only for sailors on a ship is all tattooed because whatever energy is now they're coming and picking up they're thinking, this is okay, this is peaceful, this is green, this is a part of the earth, I want to put butterflies all over my head and my face and because of the subtlety of her energy she's very susceptible to picking up all qualities of energy. And she has a, a hard inside that she can endure a tremendous amount of pain and that's why they're capable of giving birth. Man is the reverse, he's like a walnut on the outside, has no emotion but his inner core is very soft and sweet. And the role of the shaykh is to crack the nut and bring out the fruit and bring out. So what's inside the man, if the outside can be cracked and the, the hard shell of this world teaching the man just to be tough and hard and hard, if that light hit and crack that person their inner core is soft and can be brought out, inshaAllah. Bi-hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.